everybody, this is number two of the Balmoral 2D Baseball Saturday, uh, whatever you call these things. Uh, today I was working on the menu a little bit. You can see that we've got some particle effects going on here. I was really having fun with this particles 2D node that you can create. Uh, there's a lot of options that you can set for it. If you are just first time seeing this particles 2D thing, it can get a little tricky. It, I still have a lot to learn about it, but the big deal of it here is in the process material. You would go here assign a material, new particles material, and then once you've assigned that you can click on it, which seems kinda counterintuitive at first, but once you click on it it's gonna turn blue like that, show you all these different options you can set. Um, I've set, got the gravity set to negative 20 on the Y right now, you can see that that means that these little particles are going upwards uh, against gravity because gravity is, we're on the moon here apparently. So those are flo floating up uh, particles are really fun. I've also got particles on my field overhead on this ball here. Whoop, whoop, zoomed a little fast there. And you, you can see it's not very great. And when I hit this ball, it still is not a tail the way I want. I want that to be a tail so that when the ball flies through the air, it looks like it's going super fast if it's moving super fast. And I uh, just want it to be atmospheric. That's kind of stuff down the road anyway. I'm still working on a solid batting animation and uh, simulation so that is my priority what I didn't mention last time was the global scene uh, the global scene right here is loaded by default every time I start the game so what that looks like how and how you would and how you would set that is you would go to project settings and on auto load tab here you can see I've got three things loading one is the global scene which is kind of a scene that doesn't have any uh, you can't see it but it's there, just kind of loading. It's kind of the master control of the whole entire game. Uh, this is a global script, which any kind of thing that I want to happen on multiple scenes, on all the scenes, this just holds my my master controls, basically, as far as variables, sounds, whatever else I throw in there. And then you got our main menu loading, of course, so that when you start the game, you got the menu. Uh, what I, what I was working on today, though, is the options menu. The only reason I implemented it is because every time I start this game, it, it was a little, a little boring. It was boring. There was just a screen. There was some text on it. When you hovered over the text, there was nothing happening. Uh, so I wanted to spice it up a little bit just to make my normal Saturday workflow in this thing a little more entertaining. So I put these particles on there. They might not stay there forever. They're just I'm just playing with them. They're kind of fun. And then I also worked on when you hover over these different things here, uh, making them change color. A little little bit of feedback for the player so that they can tell that they're buttons and not just random words. Um, I, won I wanted to mention one thing about these buttons. The way I've implemented them is not terrific. I have separate scenes for each one of these, which is... It seems like it's okay, and there's only three buttons, so it's not a big deal. But if you were going to do anything with any, excuse me, <coughs> any complexity, you you would want to template these in a way where you only make one button as your template, and then future buttons go off of that. And and the reason is, if I wanted to make any change to any one of these buttons, it's only going to change that button, and that's going to affect my whole theme. So it would be much better for me. I'm moving my hands. You guys can't see me, but I'm explaining with my hands, and that's not doing you any good. But if if I wanted to make this work well for me in the future, I would need to make a single scene that is a button scene, and all buttons will inherit from that scene. And then every time I change a theme on that button, it will change all of the buttons. I don't know how well I explain that, but I hope you get it. Because uh, right now, if I change any any one of these buttons, I've got to do it individually on every single button, and that's atrocious from a programming perspective. And I would probably be made fun of for that from uh, super smart people. Uh, so so I did I did the option screen. I also added a little bit of music here, uh, and the music right now is Twelve String Ramble by Stock or Stock Rock. I found that on SoundClick. It doesn't have any licensing listed on it, so I hope nobody beats me up with a baseball bat. I may end up changing that. Uh, I'm not sure how well I like it for a baseball-themed game. It's okay, though, for now, instead of just total silence. So, enough of that. 
let's go ahead and hit this hit this uh hit in that bat here and see what this looks like so we've got our game writing our particles are nice variable colors i'm going to turn the volume down i don't know how loud this is for you guys on the music i'm gonna turn it up just a little bit i hope you don't I hope it doesn't hurt too much that's what our volume looks like on our music uh, but I'm going to go ahead and turn it down now you'll hear this you'll hear it restarting you hear that obviously that's awful my implementation of the code is not great and I'll show you that I'll show you why but let's go ahead and turn it off it tells you that it's turned off and we can turn it to max it says max very simple, hit the escape button, back to the main menu, and let's get out of here. So you saw that there was a couple of things different from last Saturday. Um, one of them is that you can hover over these buttons now and there is a uh, color that shows you that, you know, it's a button. That is done. Uh, let me see if I can remember where that's done. Global C, no. There's so many things going on here and I've learned so much about how to lay stuff out it's so much more important than it seems like at first but you can see very quickly on that there are a lot of nodes a lot of scenes a lot of different chunks of code going on so your implementation of uh, naming conventions and that kind of thing are very very important and that's something that I'm going to probably spend a boring Saturday uh, one one day and just fix all of that because I have not done it very well because I've just been kind of jumping in and having a lot of fun making it so as far as standardization I have not done great at it as you can see I've got some camel case kind of thing going on here and then and then I've got two caps there and then it reverses here for some reason I've got caps in the front <laughs> BG filter so that stuff maybe it doesn't seem like a big deal now but if this gets super complex and i need to reference a certain thing that naming convention needs to be 100 percent solid and i need to know exactly where uh, those things are and what they're called um but i was going to tell you about what was i going to tell you about uh oh yeah the volume control was one thing uh, let's go to our options menu so this is a slider. If you haven't seen the node before, it's right here. It is called a H, uh, what is it called? An H slider, that's what it's called. Horizontal slider, makes total sense. That's the node you can add. Um, now this slider is working in decibels because my code is affecting the volume in decibels. And how does that matter? Uh, on the settings on this H slider, we've got a minimum value of negative 24 and a maximum value of zero and if you're not aware of the way audio works for some reason I don't know why they ever did this I don't know somebody thought it would be a good idea zero is the maximum volume that is that is really loud negative 24 is in death in decibels is slightly quieter uh, but it's that's decibels that's why it looks strange so in order to show our users what that is in real human numbers because nobody wants to see a slider that slides their music to negative 24 up to zero that doesn't make any sense um, we have to figure out a way to convert that number to something that makes sense to them or just leave it off entirely which was kind of my temporary solution right now it just tells them hey you know what if it's under 24 we're just gonna say it's off and if it's greater than or equal to zero or really really loud we're just going to say it's a max and right now in the middle we have nothing it's not a great solution it's not very it doesn't you're not thinking of your players too much when you do that and i will fix that eventually and and as you noticed on our menu uh, this is what's causing our glitch of it playing and playing and playing over and over again every time we change it and it makes sense and it needs to be fixed but not right now I'm busy working on the batting simulation but what what's happening here is every single time we slide that that volume slider and every time the value changes it's gonna go through this little tree here is the music off nope uh, alright what's next is it on max nope alright what's next we're gonna play and 
99.9% of the time we're going to be in this range here because we're adjusting the volume and it's just starting the, starting the music over and over and over again and that's why it, it does that stop and start and sounds horrible. We will fix that later. Uh, there's, as you can see, there's so much to do, so many different things that could be fixed and tweaked. I have learned a ton from from when this this thing first started, and I would I would love to have you guys on board. If any of you knights are out there and you want to get involved, leave me a message down below. Uh, other than that, I will see you guys next Saturday, and I hope you learned something. See you later.